Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to build an efficient mushroom farm. First of all a warning, building a passive mob farm under which category mushroom farms fall takes a lot of effort. And yeah, it takes a lot of effort because without big preparations uh, yeah, passive mobs won't spawn in your world. There's a uh, mob cap which is normally in single player 10 and depending how many chunks are loaded in multiplayer could be a little bit higher. And uh, yeah, normally if you're in a normal world and just standing in the middle uh, of the, those loaded chunks, then you would have hundreds of mobs around you. And yeah, in order for mobs to spawn, you have to get rid of all these mobs around you. And yeah, also make sure that no new mobs spawn afterwards outside of your farm. The number of chunks uh, depends on your render distance, single player, or the, uh, the distance that is selected in, uh, in multiplayer. Uh, the default is 16 chunks, but this could be higher or lower how you select it, and that influences how many chunks you have to clear. So, but normally there are in each direction around the chunk you are located in um, uh, 16 chunks loaded, so a total of uh, 33 by 33. It doesn't uh, matter in which corner or in the middle of each of the chunk you're standing. So if you could stand in that uh, corner or in that corner, the number of chunks uh, around you is the same. Only if you would leave the, the chunk, the whole area shifts over by one. Uh, besides from clearing all the mobs in the loaded area around you, you also have to clear the spawn chunks. That's a 12 by 12 chunk area around the spawn point. Ha uh, you can just type in in the YouTube search how to find your spawn chunks and you will find a video that explains it. So, and those chunks also have to be cleared of all passive mobs. Passive mobs are all normal animals, chickens, rabbits, horses, sheep, cows, pigs, mushroom. Bats and squid have their own uh, mob cap. So, and after you cleared uh, all those chunks around you, the game would attempt to spawn new chunks in a 15 by 15 chunk area around the chunk you are uh, located in. Um, in multiplayer, from our testing that we did on the Skycraft server, it's in each direction one chunk more. So it's 17 by 17 in multiplayer. So if you have less than 10 mobs in your loaded chunks, the game would attempt to uh, spawn new mobs in each of the yeah, 15 by 15 or 17 by 17 chunks uh, around you. Um, yeah, it randomly selects a single block in each chunk for the mob spawning algorithm. The chance for a block to be selected, a block for example in your mob farm, uh, directly depends on the number of subchunks. A subchunk is a 16 high uh, section of each uh, chunk. The number of subchunks is determined by the highest uh, yeah, solid block. In a normal world, you would have uh, stone. Uh, for the first uh, stone and caves for the first uh, for subchunks and then usually on top is a layer of dirt so there are five subchunks in total by removing all the uh, yeah, solid blocks you could increase the chance for a mob to spawn in your mob form so if you would have a mob form that is only in the lowest subchunk, then and no blocks above it, then the chance is yeah five times higher than if there would be blocks above it. So for a really efficient uh, mushroom farm, you need to remove all blocks until bedrock, and then you can build your mushroom farm on top of it. The reason why mushroom farms are very interesting is that in mushroom biomes only those mushrooms spawn and no other mobs. Uh, that's very useful because from cows you get the, be the best food source and building a mushroom farm is a lot simpler than building a passive mob farm. 
And the reason is mushrooms are uh, yeah bigger than a block, so you can make a detection system that also gets rid of um, the yeah mushroom cows. If you would have a passive passive mob farm in a plains biome, also pigs and chickens and sheep can spawn that are lower uh, than or that is only uh, a block high and the problem is with this simple uh, uh, flushing type form design you can't de you can't detect uh, mobs that are uh, not higher than a single block so that's why mushroom farms are very interesting and here we can already see the whole farm so I cut out a slice a goal was to make this farm one wide tileable and the reason to make it one-way tileable was to activate as few pistons as possible each time a mushroom cow spawns. So as you can see, if a mushroom cow spawns, then it would activate only one piston and occasionally the piston next to it. But not a whole row of pistons if the tripwire would go, would go in that direction and yeah, would activate a whole row of pistons each time. A disadvantage is that if a cow on the upper layer, uh, upper layer would spawn, it would also activate the lower layer on its way down. Yeah, and the reason is just that the tripwire spawns across the middle section, yeah, and also on both sides the uh, pistons are activated. But it's still more lack efficient as the other alternative. Also, I try to pack the mycelium as closely together as possible and that made it a little bit more difficult to yeah, activate a single piston. But it's not really hard to build, it's uh, a little bit uh, expensive to make it but yeah, mushroom farms are usually for players that are well established in their world. Um, one side note, you could replace the redstone block with a cauldron and that repeater with a comparator. Also, you would have to fill the cauldron with water. Uh, yeah, that's interesting if you don't have a lot of redstone, but a lot of iron and a lot of quartz for comparators. Also, those blocks have to be uh, non-solid because it uh, influences the spawn behavior. Uh, the only alternating thing uh, in each slice is that you alternate between uh, power rails and activator rails. But apart from that, the farm is uh, one wide tileable. And here you can see where I made a 240 long uh, yeah, farm out of it. It's very simple to build. What's also noteworthy are the tor tor torches and this glowstone here, which prevents uh, hostile mobs from spawning. Also, um, slimes could in theory spawn in there. To prevent big slimes from spawning, you could can put a, a layer of glass blocks um, yeah, above the farm, so no big uh, slimes could spawn. Small and middle slimes are no problem, because they would also get flushed down and be killed by the lava. And having uh, yeah, transparent blocks at that higher doesn't create a new subchunk for the randomly selected blocks. So yeah, don't put a solid block above it. Also interesting is the killing mechanism at the bottom here. Uh, again, I try to save as much vertical space as possible so the yeah do, so you don't have to build it uh, very high for the maximum efficiency. And what's interesting about this is that despite the fact that the cow burns from the lava, it drops uh, raw beef. So you can see it, the cow would burn and still get raw beef. That was from the pig uh, I spawned before. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is intended behavior. Uh, normally it, it should drop steak, but I didn't find a solution that doesn't use uh, a lot of vertical space uh, but drops steak but but if you have a furnace array uh, in a little coal you get more than enough steak out of it. Also what's interesting is that I use trapdoors here. If you would use um, f uh, signs then it would no longer be uh, lossless 
but with the trapdoors the whole design is lossless. Uh, tried it with a hundred mobs and I got more than 200 uh, raw beef out of it. So that test confirms that. Also I got uh, I think 98 leather and normally a cow drops two beef and one leather so yeah it's lossless. You can also see it. The rates of this uh, yeah, bigger farm here are crazy good. So in total you have 5760 spawning spaces um, and you would get uh, above 3000 uh, beef per hour and above 1500 leather per hour. Here is an overview of the farm. So obviously you have to stand in the middle chunk somewhere if you want to have the whole farm loaded. You don't have to stand in this chunk, you could also stand in that chunk for example and you would still have cow spawning in the last chunk over, over there. But you have to stand somewhere in, in this middle axis for the whole farm to be loaded. Of course you could also alternate it and make uh, yeah more something like that. So you just stack a few farms together if, if that's yeah if you like that more. But I went with test here because it was easy to MC edit and yeah the rates are really good um, for example the farm that was shown uh, by JL in the latest Zipcrowd server tour um, had a hundred thousand spawning spaces which is almost 18 times as much but only dropped um, 7000 uh, yeah, stake per hour so this farm is more than six times as efficient as the uh, yeah, farm they built on the zip code server. I would also, but if you want to know more about passive mob spawning, I would also recommend watching that video because uh, JL explains uh, uh, the mob spawning algorithm of mushrooms in more detail. So it's really recommended to also watch that. So one last note about this. Um, if you would want to stack more layers above this one, so use a uh, second subjunk. So if you would have only a single uh, solid block on top of it, it would already uh, load the second subjunk. So it would only make sense to build five more layers to use the second subjunk fully. And in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to stack more than two layers above each other because it you know, would create a lot of lag because on the way down the mushrooms uh, activate all the other layers so with two it's it's really lag efficient but but more than two uh, becomes a little bit tricky. Uh, I would rather recommend using the whole perimeter first if you want to really for go for a really crazy farm but normally even with that thing over, over here which drops 3000 steak per hour you will never get hungry it can feed a whole server. Yeah, uh, also I had have the bedrock in this world uh, like in a normal world, so uh, you stand at Y5. So it's like in a normal world. Uh, on to save on lag, you could also replace the hoppers here with a hopper minecart to save on lag. But yeah, I hope I covered it all by now. Uh, if you still have questions, feel free to ask. As always, I uh, wish you a good day and goodbye.